Hey, it's 529. Welcome to the show. Nearly a million kids could lose having a free lunch if a new proposal from the Trump administration gets the green light. Right now, students automatically qualify for free lunches if their family receive food stamps. This proposal would tighten the eligibility to give the government assistance. It's a conversation already happening on our Facebook page. That's why we are asking you, should the federal government be involved in the school lunch system? Well, right now, just jump on our app or go to abc10.com slash vote. People are talking. Oh, people are talking. Pam's like outright no. Kelly says children should be able to eat for free, but Charlene has a good point. She said free lunch shouldn't be taken away from kids, but the food stamp should be restricted to only give good food for a kid's nutrition. Yeah, good good food, nutritious food. That's, that's the key, too. Sure. Let's get to all of your local and national top stories. We call it Daily Blend. We do it in five minutes. Tracy is in with traffic today. Hey, good morning, guys. Well, we're going to start things off with our live drive. Uh, Jeremy, he's all over the place right now. He's 80 westbound on Dixon. And you can see that's moving pretty nicely as well. 5.30 in the morning. Here's a look at some of your drive times. If you are coming in and you are going to be heading in toward the Natomas area and you're leaving Natomas, going to downtown Sacramento, it'll take you about eight minutes on Interstate 5, traveling around 73 miles per hour. If you're going to be headed from the Roseville area coming into downtown Sacramento, that'll take you about 15 minutes on 80 westbound, and most cars are traveling around 72 miles per hour. That's a quick look at your traffic this morning. For your weather, here's Rob. There's a lot of honesty in those drive times right there. <laughs> uh, so we're out here in the Gilmore backyard, and you know what? Yesterday I was thinking, hey, by about this time, I think we're probably going to get a little bit of rain. And that's true if you're in Auburn. <laughs> that's not true where I am. So let's go ahead and just lay it on out here. Uh, this is the scenario at the moment. We are getting some light showers uh, in the Sierra foothills. And I might want to add, I've been talking about this on Facebook. And uh, viewer Karen uh, is in truck. He said they're getting pounded with some sleet right now and some strong winds. So it's not a total bust. It's just uh, everything off to the right of that red line, which is off to the east. So anything with elevation, yeah, you're getting hit with a storm. Everybody else, it just didn't come together. There wasn't enough lift. So that's for us weather nerds to worry about. All you need to know is that we've got some wind up high. 70s yesterday, early morning lows were in the 40s, but now we've moved into the 50s. So aside from the leftover light showers in the mountains, it's all about this. Warming up to the low 70s today. This is a four to five degree drop from just yesterday. So a nice day ahead. Certainly looks and feels like fall out there. Great way to start your day, even if our little corduroy pumpkins are nice and dry this morning when I thought they might be wet. Back to you, Walt. Wow, I didn't expect to see a corduroy pumpkin today. <laughs> All right, Rob, it is the best time of the year, isn't it? It is now uh, 532, sad news, breaking news this morning. Democratic Congressman Elijah Cummings has died at 68. He passed away at Johns Hopkins Hospital after some long st standing health challenges. He had a medical procedure a couple of weeks ago. He was expected to return to his office this week. Congressman Cummings used his platform to ensure the next generation had access to health care and education, clean air and water, and a strong economy. Reaction is pouring in this morning. A lot of lawmakers and people who worked with Cummings have been tweeting their condolences, including California Senator Kamala Harris and the Reverend Al Sharpton. Elijah Cummings passes at the young age of 68. And the suspect in the murder of four people in Roseville made his first court appearance. Shankar Hangud was wearing handcuffs and a green safety vest, often used when someone's on suicide watch. He refused to court appoint an attorney multiple times before finally agreeing to one. Hangud faces murder charges after police say he confessed to murdering four members of his family. Uh, the charge is a capital case, which means that he could possibly receive the death penalty. I know there's a moratorium now, but it doesn't mean that there will not be a change in the future. Hangud is expected to be back in court a week from tomorrow. Kirsten? 534 coming up on it right now. Let's get to some other top stories right now in your Daily Blend. Impeachment showdown. This morning, a key figure in the impeachment inquiry is getting ready to testify. The ambassador to the European Union, Gordon Sondland, will appear before three House committees. He was expected to testify last week when he agreed to appear without a subpoena, but the White House blocked him from testifying. Meeting meltdown. Top Democrats walked out of a meeting with the president. They accuse him of having a meltdown while talking about the crisis in Syria. President Trump tweeted a photo from the meeting saying White House Speaker Nancy Pelosi was the one who had a meltdown. Pelosi says the president was shaken after the House voted to condemn his withdrawal of American forces from northern Syria. Sutter Health Settlement. 
One of California's biggest hospital systems has settled a class action lawsuit. This over allegations it abused its market power to snuff out the competition and overcharge patients. The case was brought by 1,500 employers and was later joined by State Attorney General Javier Becerra. Right now, the AG's office is not releasing details of the settlement. I'm Carlos Herrera, live at San Joaquin Delta College in Stockton, where local artists are coming together to put together this exhibit here that really paints the picture of the humanitarian crisis at the U.S.-Mexico border. These are paintings, these are sculptures that really tackle tough, tough, tough issues. Take a look at this piece here. This is called a cobija, or a blanket. It's the first thing that migrants get once they cross the U.S.-Mexico border and they're seeking asylum. Not only does it protect them from the cold, but from many other things. And here on the blanket, you can see all those protection symbols that are painted over it. Really significant and really represents the struggle that people go through once they cross the U.S.-Mexico border. This one here is called Agua de Vida. It's a painting that it's about a gallon of water but all the risks that come with getting that gallon of water once you're crossing the U.S.-Mexico border. John Marlies here, director of this gallery. This is amazing work, but really meaningful. And you know what, we go back to talking about people living in San Joaquin County. A lot of them live through this day to day or have lived through this before. Correct, and that's why it's so important for them to have a voice. And it's also important for others to see their voice and hear their voice and understand where they're coming from. And that's why this is here. It's an educational gallery first and foremost. And so we really try to put on shows that have, um, the artists are speaking their voice and the community is here to see that voice and hear that voice. Quite amazing work. Most of them are actually interactive. It's opening reception today from 5 to 7 p.m. at San Joaquin Delta College. The exhibit runs through November 7th uh, with the closing reception called Celebration of Unity at Noon on November 7th. Good news about this, admission is free and open to the public. Coming up in the next half hour, we talk to the local artists who have a lot to do with putting together all of this exhibit. This is a phenomenal work coming out from local artists here in Stockton. We're sending it back over to you. Oh, thank you, Carlos. Such impactful pictures right there. All right, thank you for that. And that is your Daily Blend. If you got something you want to share with us and you see it online, just use the hashtag MorningBlend10.